Hey crafters, welcome back to Vinyl Diva Crafts. I'm Nikki, and in today's video, we're gonna do a really fun unboxing and make with me using this brand new collection from Katherine Pooler Designs. We're gonna use the Peruvian Market paper pad, as well as this really cute little stamp set with this fun llama and birthday cake by Katherine Pooler. Uh, the set is called Birthday Fiesta Stamp Set. And then we're also going to do some fun ink blending using this kind of sunburst stencil. And it's called the Sundance Stencil. And all of these little items that I have pulled will come together to make this adorable birthday card. Um, I just, I think this turned out super, super cute. So if you're interested in seeing how all of this came together, please stay tuned because all of the fun is coming up next. Okay, so I got some seriously happy mail the other day. Um, this is a box of products from Katherine Pooler Designs, and this is a little teaser of what's to come. Um, all of her socials are right here, but I'll go ahead and link everything below as well in case you're interested in purchasing any of these for yourself. Um, but I saw Katherine Pooler's page pop up on my Facebook and looking at some of the designs I just knew that I needed to pick up a couple products from her um, because they were totally my style you know every once in a while you come across something that just hits a nerve and it's like instant add to cart so I'm just gonna remove my packing slip with all my my personal details on it and get to opening here so right away I just love how colorful her packaging is. This is so cute. The yellow tissue paper, the little seal. And when we unwrap it, oh my goodness, look at all of these items in here. So I'm just going to take everything out first and then we can kind of look at everything one by one. Get the box out of the way here. Okay, so this box contains two different product bundles. And the first item that we got is this beautiful full-size ink pad in Something Borrowed. Really pretty shade of blue. I'm excited to see how that ink fares um, in comparison to some of the other ones that I like to use. And then this gorgeous collection of sequins in the Lima mix. So one of the product bundles is kind of Peruvian in theme. So this color combo is totally on par with the kind of South American flair. So really, really cute. Our little welcome card. And then this is where I just could not <laughs> resist. This little stamp set called to me because of this guy right here. This llama is so stinking cute. He's got um, a bunch of little accessories and this fun cake with the tall birthday candles. Just so cute. I love that it's got this Feliz Cumpleaños stamp. And then it came with the coordinating dies in the bundle that I picked up. So really nice to have both the stamps and dies. And then this is just kind of a continuation, some more jungle animals, a cute little sloth hanging upside down. Things are about to be wild or get wild. And then um, just some fun little accessories. And again, coordinating dies, always a great thing to, um, to pair with your cling stamps. And then I thought this was a really nice addition to my um, card making collection this little sympathy set of cling stamps. I don't make very many sympathy cards, but it's always nice to have just some thoughtful sentiments, um, you know, thinking of you type, um, type stamps. And this little set of plant stamps, I love anything, plants or succulents. I just thought these were so cute and um, I, I liked that these were kind of encouraging um, sentiments as well. So again, picked up the coordinating dies. I'm a sucker for a coordinating die. And I got this really cute hugs uh, die with the shadow layer, a nice chunky bold font. And this was so cute. 
I thought that these little boho kind of macrame dies would look adorable with the, the plant stamps. So definitely something fun to play with. And then it, um, the kind of Peruvian bundle came with this really fun jungle die that's a full A2 size um, die. So I'm going to bring in, this is an A2 size card. So this really, it will cover the front of an A2 size card. So really, really cute. You could have some fun ink blending with that for sure. We'll open this up in just a second, uh, but the bundle also came with a really pretty kind of sunburst patterned stencil. And it is called the uh, Sundance stencil. So that that's really nice as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut uh, the shrink wrap off of this and we'll open it up. So one of my many crafting guilty pleasures is pattern paper. And when I saw that this was included in the bundle, I got really, really excited. Um, it's the six by six pattern paper and you get 24 sheets and eight different designs. And this is 80 pound cardstock. So it's a nice substantial weight and like, look at how beautiful these patterns are. You know, some of them are kind of, you know, more on the simple side, which is really, really nice. But then you have, you know, some more elaborate patterns. This is kind of along that jungle theme that the stamps are in. So, so pretty. I love this kind of multicolored, wavy design. And you can obviously you know, go horizontal or vertical with these. This pink one is really, really pretty too. And then this cute little multicolored tassel one. Again, kind of a more subtle pattern, but so, so cute. And I love this pattern. This might be one of my favorites in the bundle. I just think it's so fun. And again, you can play with the direction of it. Really, really cool. This is another one though that kind of steals my heart a little bit. It's really pretty. So overall, just a gorgeous paper pack in this bundle. Okay, so that was a quick look at the In the Amazon and the Green Thumb bundles from Katherine Pooler Designs. And I wanted to go ahead and just pull a couple of these supplies to make a card. So if you're interested in seeing that, stay tuned. Okay, I pulled from some of the goodies from the two Katherine Pooler bundles. And I'm going to be using something from the Peruvian Market paper pad. These two stamps and this fun stencil to make a birthday card. And I figured I would also incorporate these reverse sentiment strips by Kathy Zilski to add a little birthday greeting. And I'm gonna put it all on a lime green card base. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down to an A2 size and we'll get started. Now I trimmed my cardstock down so that this will be an A2 top folding card when I'm all done um, scoring my card base. So I'm just going to bring in my scoring tool here, line it up, and because this is 11 inches to score this in half, I'm going to go to the five and a half marking, five and a half inch marking on my scoreboard and just score this down. So this will be four and a quarter by five and a half. And bring in my little bone folder here. And then I can just put that nice crease in the card base. And I just think this cardstock is such a fun color. It's gonna be really cool to play with all of these pretty South American designs. So I'm just gonna put the card base off to the side and start kind of um, playing with my paper pack here. There's so much to choose from, 
but I think I want to go back and revisit this pattern. I loved this so much. It reminds me of like those really pretty South American like blankets, you know? So um, I just, I love every pattern in here though. And I, what I liked about this is she also gives you suggestions for ink pads. So um, kind of a nice, nice little touch. And I think I want it to go, do I want the little darts going up or down or across? I don't know. I kind of, I kind of like the thought of them going up or down. Down is cute, but I, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out once I trim this card panel down a little bit. So I'm just going to bring in my Waffle Flower A2 Layers dies and kind of get an idea of how much of a border I want showing of the lime green cardstock. I don't need a, a super huge border, but I do want a little bit of that peeking through because it is such a fun color. I'm thinking that might not be enough. I feel like it needs just a little bit more. I want this to be a really colorful, colorful, happy card. So I think this is kind of the sweet spot here. So put those off to the side, put my card base off to the side and bring this guy in. And I love using these dies to just kind of frame my my paper ahead of time because you can really really narrow it down to show exactly which part of the pattern you like best so I'm thinking something something kind of along these lines pick up you know the stripes on either side of the the little darts and that looks pretty good so I'll come in with my purple tape and this is just a low tack adhesive tape that will hold the die in place while I'm cutting it down using um, my Spellbinders Platinum Machine. So we'll bring in the die cutting machine and just open it up. Oh, sorry bump in the camera there. <laughs> it's so hard to fit this in frame too because it's just such a big die cutting machine. I love this though. It, it really does get the job done. So definitely a worthwhile investment. And I will build my little uh, plate sandwich here. So it's got like the big base plate, one of the clear plates, my materials and the die, and then the top plate. See, move this over a little bit so you can watch me crank it through. I always think this is like the fun part, all the, the crunching <laughs> as it goes through the die cutting machine. Uh, and I'm going to run it through twice just to be sure that I, um, I got a really nice crisp cut. And put this off to the side so I can move the spell binders out of the way and let's see how this did all right just pop it out oh that's such a pretty pattern and the cut on this is really really nice I think I got it pretty well um, you know, spaced out so you get a little bit of everything. And you can see, even with the low tack adhesive, it did pull up a little bit of the ink, but you can still save this scrap and use it for another project later. So I'm really happy with how this turned out, and I think it looks really nice on this card base. So I'll put this off to the side so we can get to stenciling. I pulled a nice sized scrap of white cardstock from my scrap pile. And this way I'll be able to stencil and stamp on the same piece and use up a really nice scrap. 
so there's very little waste. And I'm going to bring in my Catherine Pooler stencil and this Distress Oxide Mustard Seed Ink. I think it pairs really, really nicely with the yellow that's in that pattern cardstock. So I'll tape down the stencil and get to blending. Okay, so I used a little bit of my purple tape to adhere the stencil to my cardstock. And then with some clear tape, I just stuck the stencil directly to my mat. And this will help eliminate any shifting while I blend my ink out. And this color is very vibrant, so feel free to start off a little bit lighter and build to your liking as you go. So I'm just going to blend this out across the cardstock, and I'll meet you back here when it's all done. Now that I have created basically my own pattern paper using that pretty stencil, I can come back in with my waffle flower uh, layer dies and just frame this out again using these to determine how big I want that border to be. And I think I'm missing one of my dies because I think there's one more that's like the sweet spot in between these two. I was using one earlier today and I don't think I put it back. So let me take a peek in my little stash of projects in progress. And here it is. This is the one I have a feeling. So yeah, see, then you pick up a little bit of each of those um, kind of darts in the, the middle. And I think that will add some nice visual interest to this card. So I'm going to go ahead and tape this down. Again, you can totally play with this and pick up, um, you know, exactly the portion of this pattern that you would like to use. It's kind of fun, you know, do I want, do I want to kind of cut some of those in half? I think that looks really nice. And then you kind of get you know, a little bit of that pattern running off of the, the panel as well. That looks really cool. I like that. So I will just come back in with my spell binders. And crank it through. And I always love working with stencils because I really feel like you can customize your um, your cardstock to look however you would like you know you can you can mask portions of it off you could totally uh, blend multiple colors into this um, just because of the the pattern that I went with I decided to keep it one color but you could absolutely play with multiple colors um, or you know like I said mask portions of that stencil off and and just really have fun creating with that So we've got our additional panel cut out here. And I think that looks really, really nice. So kind of get a little bit of that pattern, like I said, running off of the page, which just seems to help the flow of one panel into the next when you're layering everything. Um, I just think that as the the pattern runs off of one page into the next or off of one panel into the next um, it, it just keeps everything cohesive so now I will bring everything back in and just double check all of the margins look really nice and like I said I just think the the mustard seed ink really looks uh, complementary to that pattern cardstock so I'm just going to pull my Misty out and we can get to stamping. 
of course I had to pull the llama and the cute little birthday cake with the abnormally tall candles. Um, I think these are going to be the perfect little addition to this card. And I'm going to bring in my Misty and just keep all of my, my little elements off to the side. Just flip this around here. Sorry for that reflection. And I can come in with my scrap of a scrap <laughs> from the piece of cardstock that I used for stenciling. And line that up in the corner of my Misty. Oh, that helps when the pad <laughs> is aligned as well. I'm going to flip it just because it seems a little bit longer this way. Okay. And that looks good. So I'm going to place the stamp onto the cardstock flat side up. And then this way I can close over the misty door and know that my stamp is exactly where I want it. This is just the um, stamp pressure tool from Pink Fresh Studio. I like to use that to make sure that there are no bubbles in the stamp. It just applies even pressure over that stamp so it, it gets, um, you know, it clings to the door nicely. And then I just condition the stamp a little bit with my finger. This will remove any coating that may be left on the stamp from, um, you know, manufacturing. And just get it nice and primed for the ink and I will be using the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. This seems to be just the ideal ink for alcohol markers. It works so well. So I'll apply my ink directly to the stamp. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. I love this llama. Like, I'm a little obsessed, but he's just adorable. Look at his little face. Uh, okay, so now that it's all inked up, I can close the misty door again and apply that even pressure to make sure that we get a really good impression onto the cardstock. Oh, wow. That looks really good. I don't even know if I'm going to need to re-ink that. I think that looks perfect just the way it is. So I'll come in with my stamp chamois and wipe everything down. I try to be mindful of putting everything away as I go so that I don't lose anything because these cling stamps are so easy to misplace if you don't Put them right back on the, the sheet when you're done. Okay, put this off to the side and come in with the cute little birthday cake. And be mindful when you place these on the cardstock. Give yourself some nice room for die cutting. You want to give yourself room to, to place those dies. So. this lined up again. Prime. And you can kind of see, maybe not on camera, but um, in person you can see those stamps get a little bit cloudy after you've primed them with your finger. That's how you know it's ready to receive the ink. This up really nicely as well. And close the door. Pressure tool. Oops. I'm just rocking the table all over the place. <laughs>
Hopefully we get a really good impression here as well. Oh wow, that looks so good. I didn't need to re-ink either one of those. So I'm just going to clean up a little bit and pull some alcohol markers so that we can get to the fun part, the coloring. These are the markers that I pulled to color everything in. So I'll just play some relaxing music while I get to coloring. How cute these turned out. I really love the shading that I was able to accomplish on the llama. So fun. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the coordinating dies and we can get to die cutting. I mentioned earlier I always find it helpful when I'm able to pick up a coordinating die set for my stamps. I just think it saves a bunch of time on cutting things out and it looks way more professional than what I can accomplish with scissors. So I'm going to get these out of the packaging, trim them apart, and run them through my spellbinders. Okay, moment of truth. Let's pop these out and see how well I did with lining the dies up <laughs> with the stamped images. Not too bad, they look so cute. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm just even more in love. I didn't think it was possible, but I am even more in love with this stamp set. And you can really see how beneficial it is to have the coordinating dies because those edges, I just could not accomplish that with scissors. If I had cut that out manually, there's no way. Um, plus the dies press the edges down a little bit, so they're just nice and soft and buttery. Look at how cute this is. Oh my goodness, I love it. Oh, and the cake, so fun. So I'm going to grab all of the elements and now we can finally bring everything together to complete the card. So I brought all of the little pieces together and started mocking them up, but before I make anything permanent, I want to go ahead and cut out my little birthday sentiment using these Kathy Zilski reverse sentiment strips that I purchased from Simon Says Stamp. I'll link them below because they are just so versatile. Um, they look great paired with a larger, um, you know, die cut sentiment, but they also are great as standalone sentiments. And I think I want to use this blow out your candles. I've used the, um, just the generic happy birthday as well, but I don't know, the blow out your candles is too perfect for this llama and his little birthday cake. So I've kind of determined that I like the cake nestled into this one sunburst. I just think it looks cute, almost like, like it's exploding off of the page. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to kind of line everything else up based around that. All right, I'm gonna put these off to the side once again and bring in my mini guillotine paper trimmer. I love this. It just gives me a little bit more control over these tiny sentiment strips. I want to make sure that I'm giving myself a little bit of a border around the sentiment. Give it a little chop. <laughs> I 
And I love that Kathy designed these so that you've got some larger sentiments as well as these really tiny ones. Um, it's just, like I said, really versatile. So many great birthday phrases. And I know they sell some other ones as well. You know, I think they have Mother's Day, Father's Day, Thinking of You. I always like to have these on hand though. And our last little chop. Okay, there we go. Blow out your candles. And because there are so many large elements to this card and a lot of patterns going on, I think a simple, small sentiment is absolutely perfect for this card. Get my, my paper lined up again. Kind of get everything placed back where I want it. Yeah, that looks really, really cute. And with that, I think we can finally say that we're in the home stretch. <laughs> so if you've followed this card's journey this far, thank you so much. I know it's a labor of love, but I think now we'll see it all come together. It'll be totally worth it. So I'm just applying some adhesive using my tape runner. And I'm just gonna stick this sunburst panel directly to the patterned cardstock. I'll build up some other elements of this card, but these first two panels, I want to just stick them directly to one another. Give myself a little wiggle room with that liquid glue this centered. Oh yeah. Oh, that looks so good. Give it a press. And before I start placing all of the smaller elements down, I want to go in and do the, the Kathy Zilski trick <laughs> of coloring the edges of my sentiment strip with a black permanent marker. This just makes sure that none of that white edge is showing so that it looks like it was printed on black cardstock. So I, I love this little trick of hers. I use this every time I use these strips. And it just gives a really crisp black edge to that cute little sentiment. So now we can start building, building out our little scene. And I'm going to bring in all of the foam tape. <laughs> so I've got some foam squares that I'll use for some of these smaller areas. It's a little bit thicker than the foam tape that I have, but it shouldn't matter too much. So I'll pop a couple of these off. And stick them down. And I just think that the little bit of height that you get on these pieces really elevates any card to the next level. So I think I'll do four little squares on this cake. One right at the top by the candles. And I'm going to come in with my tweezers because I just always like being able to be very precise with how I place my elements down. Oh my goodness. 
right in the center of that little starburst or sunburst. It's so cute. I love it. And then our little llama can go right here. Okay. This may be my favorite card I've ever made. It is so cute. And so colorful. Like for a birthday, of course, you want something that's fun, festive, colorful. And this kind of ticks all of the boxes for me on that. So I'll continue adding my foam adhesive all around this little llama. I'll use some of the squares on these smaller portions of his little body. And then I can come in with longer strips of foam tape to, um, to fill in the larger portions of his body. So just kind of moving those up and bring in my little roll of foam tape. I just kind of eyeball it here. And then I'll snip with my nonstick scissors. And I'll probably trim a couple of additional little pieces to go by the hooves just to build the little feet up so that they're not kind of dangling there. So we'll remove all the backings and get this guy stuck to the card. Okay, so I took all of the backing off of the foam tape and I'm coming in with a little bit of liquid glue. This again just gives me the wiggle room so that I can make any adjustments before he's absolutely permanent on the card. And I just noticed the top of his little head, I feel like he needs one more tiny little square of foam tape. Just by his little ears, I think. So that we make sure that, you know, those are popped up as well. Okay. Add one more little dot of liquid glue. And then with my tweezers, being very careful, make sure there's nothing on the surface there. There we go. I'll just kind of place him down to where his little mouth looks like he's just blowing out those birthday candles. Oh, he's so cute. I am so in love with this card, you guys. It's so cute. Okay, now the last little part of our scene here is the sentiment strip. And for that, I am once again just going to use a little liquid glue and adhere this directly to the card panel. You could absolutely build this up with some foam tape, but I think for the purposes of this card, I'm just going to stick it right to the card panel. You know, there's just a lot going on, so sometimes you have to know when to, where to keep it simple when there's a lot going on on a card. So sticking it right to the panel, I think is the best bet for, for this particular project. And then I'm gonna bring in my acrylic stamping block to give this a good press and keep it nice and flat. Clear up any excess glue, but that looks really good. One more press. <laughs> I have to apologize for any background noise. There's some kids playing outside and it got super noisy all of a sudden. But this is the finished card panel. So we built out a really fun scene with our stamp set. And now we can take the foam tape and build the card panel up off of the card base to finish this card project. I know a lot of card makers have the glass 
craft mats that are magnetic, but because I don't have one of those, I'm just going to use a small piece of my purple tape to keep my card base closed while I'm working with it. Bring in my card panel and cut some foam tape. So I've got just a big roll of this stuff for larger card elements like this. And again, I'm going to unravel a little bit and kind of eyeball these strips. I like to go top and bottom with a strip and then kind of fill it in vertically. So get these two out of the way. I don't know, I just feel like adding a strip to the top and bottom gives it a little bit more support. And go in the middle with this one. And just fill in the sides. And for me, peeling the backings off of the foam tape, that's the most satisfying part of making a card. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but for me, that's where it's at. This one's just a little bit long. Okay. And, oh, that satisfying peel. It's so good. <laughs> now make some space for myself and bring my card base back in okay center it that looks perfect Oh my gosh, let's get the tape out of the center here. Oh, it's all done and I love it so much. Oh, this is so cute. And I did go ahead and add just a couple of additional stamps. Uh, generic happy birthday greeting inside and my handmade with love stamp on the back. And that is the finished card, you guys. If you enjoyed crafting with me today, please feel free to give this video a thumbs up, and I would love it if you would join my YouTube community. So hit that subscribe button and the gray bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks so much. Bye!